Hello everyone, before we start today's video, if you could all do me a solid and lightly tap the like button, perhaps share the video about and leave a comment. If you are not subscribed, subscribe as well. It would greatly help this channel. Thank you very much. Just fantastic. Captain's log. Subdate 22913.8. Okay, so we managed to subdue and store Dear Dainty by tearing the ligaments in her monstrous cankle. Now we're en route to a rumored sighting of another lol cow. Do press F in the comments for poor Bork's 800 pound anus. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk about Gabby Hanna. Last week, many people speculated that we had all been played, in the sense that Gabby Hanna may well have used claims of episodes as a means to then promote something. A week prior, so two weeks ago, I made a video on my second channel covering other news outlets' coverage of her alleged manic episodes. I'm going to play clips of that because it's quite relevant to where we're going because I want to talk about what has happened since. For the sake of what you need to know, Gabby Hanna is predominantly busy, active, proactive, very much present on TikTok. Because she's taking a break from social media, everyone, so naturally she uploads copious amounts of content to another site. Because no one notices, right? Anyway, there will be a timestamp at the top of the start of the clip you're about to see. If you want to skip ahead to that, go nuts. NBC News are fake news. We're going to demonstrate that with an article that was shared via Cat10 blah 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 and Hannah. I stopped reading after this. F off. And that is an image. Some creators said they feared for Hannah's well being, adding that the creator community has seen its members' mental health episodes end fatally. In 2019, Desmond Amofa, a Twitch streamer and YouTuber who went by the name Etika, died by unaliveness. Prior to his death, Amofa's behavior on and offline was described as erratic, and some in the creator community appeared to goad him into rants and extreme behaviors. Please be considerate of that when talking about her online right now, tweeted YouTuber Ethan Klein. We've lost YouTubers like this before and everyone said never again. So be nice, please. She needs help right now, not ridicule. I think I know where the issue might be there. Well, there are two. One, Ethan Klein trying to be the arbiter of peace. It's going to take some planning, but yeah, I think we're going to do it. You think anyone's going to show up? I do. I think we're going to sell out. No, I mean like a presenter. <laughs> Or we're the presenters. Maybe, like, if you say, like, let's say hypothetically, most, uh, let's say, greatest breakdown, greatest metal breakdown. I don't think they're going to show up. Well, let's say, but they might. <laughs> like, let's say Gabby Hanna is nominated for greatest mental breakdown. <laughs> she might show up to accept. No. The second and more important being this seemed to allude to a blaming from a lot of people of Keemstar, even though Etika's own family disavowed all of that and did not blame Keemstar at all. In fact, they said, no, it's not his fault. Now to Cat 10, I literally overthink everything I see on the internet. Barge. Gabby Hanna's viral TikToks and the reaction to them have at times felt like a surreal TV show, a scathing critique of our systemic failures to understand and treat mental illness. But it's real, it's happening, and people can't or won't look away. People can't because she has a considerable amount of pull even now. Won't because a lot of people like a shit show. Right now, there is something really wrong, clearly. Many of us, myself included, firmly believe Gabby Hanna needs to go offline for a bit. Let's consider it a time of reflection with therapists. Perhaps a change in lifestyle will do the world of good. Getting help is a good thing, especially when there is clearly something not right. No, I'm not going to, in this video, play any clips of that. I instead want to focus our energies on the NBC News article. The concerned comments from Gabby Hanna's followers began pouring in on Wednesday. By that time, Hanna, a social media creator who has more than 12.8 million followers across YouTube and TikTok, had already posted more than 100 increasingly erratic videos to her TikTok, including several in which she made comments that some of her followers called racist and transphobic. She also uploaded videos of her letting someone, who appeared to be a stranger, enter her Southern California home. He eventually left after posting TikToks from inside her house. 
house. Since then, it appears Hannah has allowed other seemingly unknown people into her home and documented it on the platform. The videos which many have described as alarming have sparked a discussion regarding the responsibilities viewers and social media platforms have when they witness someone, particularly a public figure, appear to experience a mental health crisis live online. Hannah's TikTok posts, which included long, uncharacteristic monologues about religion and claims that she herself is a deity, have also highlighted the app's ability to launch any person or situation to the top of the internet's consciousness, regardless of the consequences. Some on social media urged the platform to step in and intervene, as Hannah continued to post videos at a rapid pace. Her name trended across Twitter on Wednesday. Her TikTok videos, which many said were pushed to their For You pages, racked up millions of views. TikTok is very much a quantity of equality thing. You post enough videos, you're going to go on that page. Nancy Ramos tweeted to TikTok US and TikTok support. When are y'all gonna stop letting Gabby Hanna post? How far does this have to go before you intervene? There is one large problem with these questions, and that is the concept that somehow the platform now has to institute some kind of mental health check. Gabby Hanna's followers, many of whom suggested was not enough action from TikTok itself, then took matters into their own hands. A few people had written in her comments that they called the police, urging them to go to Gabby Hanna's home. Several people also tagged Gabby Hanna's relatives in comments to alert them of the situation. Some also claimed to have shown up at her home to check in on her themselves. Yes, we know about those on Twitter not convinced they were there to help in the slightest. Also, what can you actually do? These efforts to help Hannah, even if they are made in good faith, are not necessarily the best approach to such a situation according to some mental health professionals. For quite a number of years, the same technique and tactic has been employed to try and get people like Eugenia Cooney removed from YouTube. The advice given is that people should reach out virtually to try and support Gabby Hanna, as that is a more appropriate response, especially if you're a fan and not a physician. Taking that a step further, however, is inappropriate, because it sends the message that people with mental illness need to be told what to do, can't make their own decisions, and need to be rescued. And a lot of the times, that's not the case. On Thursday, Gabby Hanna posted to TikTok that she had been cuffed and detained by five officers who busted into her house. Almost all of the officers asked me over and over and over again, is dot dot dot. The reason we're here is we just have to make sure you don't want to hurt anyone or yourself. And I just laugh and say, no, I don't want to hurt anybody. She also wrote on the video that she had two psychiatric evaluations but was not taken into treatment. An LAPD spokesman said that they could not disclose specific name or addresses but confirmed that officers performed a welfare check around 9am at her residence. Now I finished the article and I realised something quite interesting. The image that was posted by Hannah is not in the article, which means either the article was updated and that part was removed because of how disingenuous it was and the false equivalence it carries and also what it could potentially lead to by implying such things, or it was never there to begin with. Now to save you a lot of cringing, I'm not going to play too much of what you need to see next. Don't worry, it's over 19 parts. I am definitely not going to do that. We're instead going to go to a community post via Mrs. Parker, Inc. Everyone is asking, is Gabby okay? I think she is. And this is all to get attention to push her shitty album that she dropped a month ago. Give a few more days, and we will see her true colours shine again. And there's a point to that, because Gabby Hanna put out over a hundred TikToks where everyone believed she was having manic episodes. She deleted all of them, and instead put out this one. Yes, this album was my villain. <laughs> era and um i always loved rock music so i wanted to try rock vocal and i never had the courage or the encouragement to scream so i screamed a bit and really shouted and figured out some placement and uh really wanted to harness some anger in it this album was definitely about unleashing some inner demons and showing sort of the inner workings of not only Hollywood, but the dark side of all of our souls and minds and psyches. Understandably, no one was impressed. And there are many reasons why. To best demonstrate this, I'm going to use a Twitter thread from Lazy Bedhead. So I didn't really want to go into the Gabby Hanna stuff because it is genuinely triggering to watch her have a manic episode, air quotes there, and scare all her fans. 
but now we know it was all just to promote her latest album. So now I want to get real on here and tell you how this hurts everyone. Gabby Hanna had a random fan come into her home, live stream the inside of her house and show her license plate of her car and dox her live as everyone is watching someone who they believe is having a manic episode. With this information that it was only to promote music, one has to ask if she knew the stalker, and if she did, then she essentially let probably one of her friend's posts where she lives all over the internet to out her in real danger for no effing reason other than to promote her music. Also, a wellness check was made. What the internet thought they were bearing witness to was a mental breakdown or psychosis or something, and it very still could be. But this woman let her friends, family, and audience be worried sick about her mental and physical well-being now that she got doxxed only for it to just all be a promotion for her album. Now I'm not denying she doesn't have mental health problems, I cannot diagnose her and neither can the rest of the internet. But instead of witnessing psychosis like we thought, we might have just witnessed an ego death. Imagine being so upset that your music and poem book is criticized online, so much that you decide to exploit your own mental health to scare your fans into buying music. You allow yourself to be doxxed, you downplay a wellness check, and you belittle your fans when they ask if you're okay. Gabby being completely irresponsible with her mental health makes it so much harder for others who have such a hard time talking to others about their mental health struggles, because they don't want to be the one that people have to pity. They don't want to be accused of exploiting issues to make others feel worried or bad for them. Gabby using her issues to scare her fans into buying her music is the reason why people panic about the idea of having mental breakdowns in front of people. You may have noticed I altered a few tweets there at the end. The thread goes on a little bit longer, but I altered it for those who will undoubtedly not watch and see on the screen the writing. So they might think I'm just talking about myself. I'm really not. Since releasing the TikTok indicating she had a new album out and how cathartic it was to explore her metal side, Gabby Hanna has put out 19 parts on TikTok called About Last Week, with the prevailing comment being, is this just to promote an album? And I figured why not play a clip from the first one and the last one, because I really can't be asked to download 19 TikToks. They're all three minutes each, I'm not doing that. It felt like the old fashioned story time she did, just, you know, with a skinnier host and more rambling than usual. I'm gonna take a minute to address just a little bit of last week. So yes, I was manic. I am bipolar talked about it you can scroll back it's no secret i'm bipolar but i've never experienced a manic state i've only ever experienced a hypomanic state so that was actually a brand new thing for me that i was experiencing in real time oh here it goes oh, there's nothing i want to explain more than that video with that hose because i couldn't believe that people were not seeing what was happening I want to preface this by saying that I have used many a hose and I have used that hose many times. I know how hoses work. I know how gravity works. I know how water pressure works. I don't know much about physics, but I know enough. Now, Gabby continued on TikTok making stories about other things, other aspects, and constantly on the defensive. When you've built a community the way you have, Gabby, that's understandable. People are going to question every single facet of your being. They're also going to question whether or not any of this was legit. And yes, I played two clips from two TikToks, 19 parts apart, and none of it made any sense. It proved my point quite well. Now on Twitter, you've been a bit active. For example, Gabby Hanna can never be stopped Lamau on the 6th of September. On the 7th of September, goodbye for now. On the 10th of September, deleting my apps again, bye. Just needed to upload something real quick. It's my eight year YouTube anniversary, so I'm going to unprivate some videos. How exciting. You also came back to do two slam poems on Trump and Biden because you're an independent voter. You would have thought, perhaps saying goodbye over and over again, maybe you'd be gone. Well, at time of recording, can't sleep. Everything nine is okay. When people start to question what you do, a lot of it comes down to the fact that you built your reputation in your formative years on YouTube, especially after the fall of Vine, sensationalizing stories and rice gum slapping your phone out of your hand. Was it you? I think it was. Because people found you to be wanting and a bit of a liar and the over embellishment for the clicks, people did start to prod and probe where you were not comfortable. One of the things YouTube did allow you to do though once you built an audience big enough was to explore things you consider your passion like music. And yes, you got memed a little bit. Your poetry was considered cringy, but at least you tried it. 
no harm there, right? The issue is, when it looks like you're trying to take advantage of mental health and your own claims of ill mental health to promote yourself, you make it seem like two things. One, that you are scapegoating mental health for poor behaviour, and two, like you do not have control over the situation yet somehow pass a wellness check. 